Today is Friday, October 1st, 2021, and yesterday I had a screaming two-year-old in my car. It was only for three minutes, but it was at least two minutes and 45 seconds too long for me. We'll get back to that later, though. I promise. I spent three sessions talking about high school, so I won't go back to it, but the conclusion is that I used to think I was destined to be famous or loved by all or something. By the end of it, I thought I had grown a little bit wiser, but every time you enter a new phase of your life, you realize how weird you were in the last one. Today, I want to talk about why someone with a Bachelor of Science in Journalism spends most of their time driving around in circles, talking to strangers, or in this case, doing this podcast and talking to myself. I love sports, I love talking, and in college, I thought the journalism program would elevate me to the point where I had the skills and resources to work for a place like ESPN. In the middle of my third year of college, I realized I didn't love the process. The only part I enjoyed was writing and talking, of course. Look at me, look at me, look at me. I don't like editing video packages, creating graphics, setting up tripods, carrying cameras, taking pictures, meeting deadlines I didn't set myself, talking about things I didn't want to. I shot my last story in college, in News 3, the very last journalism class I had on an iPhone 7 Plus. Everyone else used a real camera. I just didn't care enough. I just wanted to finish with like a B. I earned my degree with a 3.0 and went to work in a call center. I was really good at the job. Starting pay was $17 an hour, and I was living what I thought was like almost a year into it, I realized that I dreaded work like every single day. Money doesn't buy happiness, they say. But I think it's more like if you spend 40 hours a week doing something you don't like, then money won't buy happiness. So I quit with no real backup plan, if I'm being honest. I quit in July of 2019. Every week up until a few months ago, I would think about how big of a disappointment I was. People who knew me from high school probably thought I'd end up on TV one day. People in college saw me on screen and knew I loved telling stories. Friends and family who knew I had the degree in journalism surely wondered why I was still in Murfreesboro, just driving around in circles. I now I now owe over $20,000 in student loans. I've been out of college for three years and I have nothing to show for it. How could I have possibly known when I signed up for MTSU at 17 that I wouldn't love my major or or have the dream job lined up after college. After driving people around for a few years, I finally stopped listening to the same old songs and discovered podcasts. And after a while, it just like hit me. Dude, like dude, dude. This is literally what you've always wanted to do. Dude. Write, talk, produce, edit, but like on your own time. I started in May of this year and um, it sucked. Like I sucked and I feel bad because When I first started out, that's probably when I was going to get the most amount of like traffic drive because people were just interested, curious. Of course, that's when I was putting out the worst content. Those first couple dozen podcasts I made, like it is me. I mean everything I said in them. I don't regret making any of them, but I still like I wasn't doing my best. Just like in college, I was doing the bare minimum to get by. Not until did I really decide that this is me now. It's mine. I'm committing to this. I've tried and quit like half a dozen jobs between the end of college and September of this year. This is one I'm going to dedicate my life to now. I know that's crazy because I'm not really making any money, money (laughs) but three episodes a week and I'm not stopping ever. It's what I love. I wouldn't like this, the show therapy, everything about it. It wouldn't exist if not for me. It's basically my baby. Half the title is my name. This week, I read a review of Derapy on Apple Podcasts that reads, First off, what kind of name is Derapy? These are ramblings of a self-obsessed narcissist. I would suggest that Derek go to a real therapist. This podcast is embarrassing. The first bit is funny because most of my favorite podcasts have the name of the person in the title, but ramblings of a self-obsessed narcissist is kind of, (laughs) that's pretty tough. I can't lie. Thinking back to my first two seasons, I was definitely rambling. That's a fair assessment. Definitely not now, though. I'd argue I over-edit. I cut too much stuff out. The self-obsessed narcissist thing is what I want to focus on. And I know that this person doesn't actually care about giving feedback on the podcast and is just trying to, like, hurt my feelings. But I still think think it's worth talking about. Who am I making this podcast for? What's the point? Is it just fully self-serving? Is it just another excuse to get people to look at me? That probably is something I would explore in therapy, but um, I can't afford therapy. Most people can't. This review actually answered the question as to why I almost cried a few days before, but not for the reason you think. (laughs) On Sunday, September 26th, I was near an emotional breakdown. I took my sister to order a new iPhone. We spent a few hours together just talking. 
and I realized just how good of friends we actually are. Shortly after I picked up my sister, I called and talked to my friend Kinsey, the same one from high school, and we talked for about like 15 minutes, and I invited her to my wedding, and she said she'd be honored. I haven't seen her in years, and we talked as if we do like every week. There was a lot to talk about. We could have talked plenty more. The same day, I made plans to see my friend Courtney, like we texted. I haven't seen her in months. I asked her if she wanted to be on the podcast. Well, I kind of told her that I needed her for the podcast. She said she was free like any day after work and the weekend. It was so easy. It's hard for me to assume that anybody's interested in doing anything involving this that I'm doing right now because I know that no one could possibly care about it as much as I do. Sharif and I also talked on the phone that day about my podcast, the one called, um, one of my sessions is called Asian Hunter. And he said it was really funny. And I didn't ask him to listen to it. He just chose to. And when he told me he found it funny, I just thought to myself, huh, this man was really off somewhere in the world just listening to me ramble about Reddit. That was just so nice to me. I was thinking about the fact that, you know, I kind of put this stuff out there. You know, I kind of post it like publicly, but I usually don't individually send it to Until people today. because, you know, I don't want to be bothersome. But um, he just chose to listen to it. What sealed the deal for me that day was calling my parents. I told them I heard an ad about getting LASIK eye surgery, and they said they'd help me do it, potentially within a year, while I'm still on their health insurance, because when I turned 26, it's all me. I'm talking about something that would change my life forever, a procedure that is probably thousands of dollars. You would think I'd just ask my mom if she could like bring me a sweet tea on the way home. And the way that her and my dad talked about it, the way that they responded to me saying that like I want to do this thing, Obviously, I don't have the money to do it. Obviously, without their insurance, I wouldn't have the possibility to do it. To me, I thought it was going to be this very long, serious, detailed conversation. And she was just like, yeah, we can help. As if I just asked her to pick up like some Cheetos on the way home. It's crazy. I hung up the phone and I immediately thought like, oh my God, like, I'm, I think I'm going to cry. My parents don't care how much student loan debt I have or that I'm not a local news anchor or that all the money in my bank account is from driving around strangers. They just want me to be happy. And this all happened on the same day. There's so many people in my life that care about me and I love them all so much. Like I'm so full of love. It's disgusting. Ugh. If it were up to me, I'd have all of them on the podcast. So everyone knows why they're so great and why I was and am so happy. So yesterday I had a screaming two-year-old in my car. I forgot all about that. <laughs> it was only a two minute trip, but he was just like, he was just going ape. King like for no reason and it took his mom so long to get him in the car and she was like all of this because he wants to look at a dumpster i don't know what that means i don't know if it's like a euphemism for something i don't know if it's like mom talk no he literally just wanted to go look at a dumpster two years old one stop was getting him to daycare the other stop was getting his mom to work and seven hours later i was still working and i pick her up from the job i dropped her off at and she tells me that when we pick up her son he should be better he's usually better in the evening she said, even though he's a little demon, she loves him more than anything. And she hopes he knows that. It was very sweet. But when we picked him up, he was still a demon. <laughs> okay. Why does that matter? I talked to my brother yesterday and we were discussing how it would have been cool to know just what our parents were like when they were our age. Know what it was like for them to raise us when we were too small to know what to do with ourselves. Or we were trying to run into a dumpster or screaming for no good reason. And I told him that it just, it just hit me. It just hit me while I was talking to my brother yesterday. My kid, or kids, can listen to therapy and know what it was like for me. That's it. Some of my favorite episodes of the show are when I have guests on, because not only do I love the people I have on, it helps illustrate who and what makes me who I am. And my mom used to say, you are who your friends are. And I think that's true. And you know how cool it'll be for me to be able to share with my children how their mother and I sounded together in our 20s, or who my friends were, and what was going on in my life. Not only am I doing something I love, I also get to bring the people I love with me. I think that's the whole point of being alive, building and nurturing relationships, finding what and who you love, and sticking to it and them. So, um, what's so embarrassing about that? 
looking at me crazy. Cause I'm driving around Miss Daisy, and in college I was lazy. You've been very defensive lately. But they were coming for my baby! Well, the podcast looking tasty, and we getting money lately. Sorry? I just found my passion, man, what's happening? I've been going up, they've been throwing up. Once they see the numbers blowing, blowing up, I've been showing up. Like Monday, Monday Wednesday, Wednesday, Friday, my way. Not the Burger King, but y'all a side plate. Looking at me sideways, y'all can hit the highway. Spotify and Apple hear me anywhere in the tri-state. I am like a fly plane, I will never die, man. They say I'm just rambling, but I'm just playing my strength. Oh Lord. Rapping to me so elementary. I'm going harder than sedimentary. I'm doing this cause it was meant to be. I'm not petty, but someone tempted me. Might clap back if someone sent for me. I'd do this without a dollar or cent for me. I won't stop and I don't bend the knee.